The Gospel of John tells us that standing by the cross of Jesus was his mother Mary. It's interesting that there is no mention of Mary bewailing or lamenting beneath the cross, as there is of the women who accompany Jesus along the way to Calvary. Only her silence is transmitted to us. Mary was silent at the moment of the birth of Jesus, and in John's Gospel, she is silent at the moment of the death of Jesus. Like others around her, she didn't cry out, My son, you have saved others. Why don't you save yourself too? She didn't even ask Jesus, Son, why have you done this to us? as she did when, having lost him, she later found him in the temple. No, Mary was silent. But to interpret her silence under the cross as the language of one who is only sad, afflicted, and sorrowful would be incorrect. For while Mary grieved deeply at the death of her son, she stood under the cross in hope. She shared not only death with her son, but also hope in the resurrection. On Calvary, she was not just the mother of sorrows, but also the mother of hope. She believed in the promises of God. She believed that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God. St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, tells us that Abraham, in hope, believed against hope. We can say the same about Mary beneath the cross. In hope, she believed against hope. Do you know what to hope against hope means? It means that without having any reason whatsoever for hope in a situation that, humanly speaking, is entirely hopeless, one never ceases to hope. One believes more in God than in the evidence of facts. It means constantly acknowledging that God is faithful and trusting that no matter what, God is always there for us. It means that even when in vain we have done everything we can to change a difficult situation, we still have something greater to do that will keep us occupied and prevent us from falling into despair. And that is to patiently endure to the end. In an unexplainable way, which probably Mary was unable to explain to herself, she believed that God was able to raise her son even from the dead. This was the great thing that Mary did as she hoped beneath the cross, and she is ready to help us do the same. In the Book of Lamentations, we find the song of a soul in, a tr in trial of utter desolation. And this can easily be applied to Mary beneath the cross. Here's how it sounds. I am the one familiar with affliction. God has led and guided me into darkness, not light. He has walled me in so I cannot escape. Even when I shout for help, he shuts out my prayer. I thought, I have forgotten what happiness is. My lasting hope in God is lost. And suddenly, right at this point, there's an unexpected turn, like the last two lines in a Shakespearean sonnet. The one lamenting has a surge of hope and we hear the believer say to himself, Surely God's mercies are not over. 
so I shall put my hope in him. For the Lord will not reject anyone forever. If he bring grief, he will have pity. Maybe there is hope. I shall put my hope in him. I shall put my hope in him. I shall put my hope in him. What glory for God and what comfort for us to be able to say these words each time when we are on the brink of despair. As the psalmist says in Psalm 40, I waited, I waited for God, then he stooped to me. Or as another psalmist who gives thanks in hope because he has experienced a resurrection. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits in his word, I hope. The letter to the Hebrews urges us, let us seize the hope set before us. So let us turn to Mary, who stayed close to the cross, hoping against all hope. Let us turn to her, invoking her powerful name often as Mother of Hope. And even at this moment, if you are distressed or feeling tempted to discouragement, then take hope and repeat to yourself, surely God's mercies are not over so I shall put my hope in him.